before I tell you about the big conclusion that ensues from the two premises on cognition. First of all, let's recap these two premises. First premise automatic and controlled cognitive processing. This premise says that there is controlled cognitive processing, and there is automatic cognitive processing, and these two are very different. Automatic cognitive processing is the one that comes with no or very little cognitive effort. It is often involuntary, and sometimes you are not even aware of it. Automatic cognitive processing is easy, as it requires little mental effort, therefore little energy. Automatic processing is usually very fast, practically instantaneous. For example, recognizing a familiar face on a photo, recognizing an angry face in an audience, all these things are mostly automatic and very fast. Controlled cognitive processing is inverse of the automatic in many respects. It requires attention. It requires at least some mental effort. Such processing is always intentional, and we are always aware of it. Controlled cognitive processing, depending on how effortful it is, also has physiological manifestation. For example, when you have to solve a difficult math problem, or when you have to lie about something important, your blood pressure will rise, your heart rate will increase, your pupils will dilate, your body temperature might increase. You might even experience an increase in capillary blood flow in the skin, or simply blushing. Other examples of situations when controlled processing is involved would be recalling some complex information from memory, for example, a plot of a movie. Or, any sort of multitasking, such as listening to someone and typing a text in the same time. Second premise is the one about cognitive miser. It basically says that our minds are programmed to constantly look for mental shortcuts in situations when decisions or assessments are to be made. Or an opinion is to be formed. Now, let's see what conclusion can be drawn from these two premises combined. The conclusion is that your fast and lazy automatic brain is constantly trying to tempt your controlled brain into a mental shortcut. The problem is that it is not always okay. Because some situations require automatic processing. While in other situations, mental shortcuts are dangerous. A million years ago, when our lives were primitive, mental shortcuts were very useful. Something looks weird? Run away. Something looks eatable? Grab it and then run away. Simple and efficient logic that helped us to survive in the simple harshness of primeval world. But in the contemporary complex society, people have to monitor and regulate their automatic brain all the time. Otherwise they might run into a trouble. Or simply make a bad decision. So, when automatic processing is useful and when it is harmful, Evaluating whether a creature, such as an animal, is dangerous or not. This is done automatically, in an instant. If it wasn't, people wouldn't have survived as a species. Evaluating whether another person is attractive or not is also automatic, largely instinctive, but also subjective of course. Nevertheless, it is highly automatic. Happens instantaneously. This particular task is related to reproduction. So our brains are genetically pre-programmed to perform such assessment and it is totally all right. How about evaluating a job candidate based on a CV and self-presentation? Not so automatic, is it? Not going to happen instantaneously. Or should not happen instantaneously. Right? But, even in this situation your brain will naturally try to shift your mind on the automatic track of processing, and reach a decision in the easiest way possible. Through a cognitive shortcut and your consciousness will be constantly compensating for this, and resisting the temptation to fall into the automatic processing. To illustrate this more vividly, let's imagine a situation when your automatic brain, and your consciousness are assessing a job candidate together. Your automatic brain will say something like this. It's all clear, nothing to think about, don't hire this guy, he doesn't look very professional, his shirt is not ironed, and he looks kind of silly. And your consciousness will most probably compensate for this by saying, he might not look like a rocket scientist, but he talks well, and he says reasonable things. And then your automatic brain goes again. But the first line of his CV says that he graduated from the University of the Middle of Nowhere. Why even read the rest? And your controlled brain compensates this again. But despite his lack of prestigious education, his career path is solid and coherent, if you look carefully. But, the thing is, that the automatic brain doesn't look carefully into anything. Automatic brain is lazy, although it is very fast, and very efficient in certain situations. So, 
This kind of struggle, between automatic brain, that loves jumping into conclusions, and controlled brain, that processes information thoroughly, is permanent. And this is the important conclusion from the theories of automatic and controlled processing and cognitive miser. Now take a short quiz to see if you understand well in what kind of situations automatic processing can create problems. After that, I will tell you about most typical cognitive traps that our lazy brain drags us into. When a cognitive shortcut becomes a trap, we call it a cognitive bias. There are quite of a few of them. They are all notorious and well studied by psychologists. I will tell you about the most important ones.